Hi everyone, so this has been a very, very frequently requested video on how to take notes. So um, I've been compiling my ideas and how I've been taking notes and I just want to share them with you guys. So step number one is finding your crew. Um, considering the amount of notes that you have to take in med school, it's probably going to be best if you have two or three other people taking notes with you. Make sure you can trust your crew because these are the people who are going to be writing all the information in the notes. If you're going to be doing it the way I did, you're going to be getting most of your study material from your notes. So make sure that what you think is important, they also think it's important. So before the start of the week, uh, me and my group of friends, we would divide up the lectures into three parts. So there are three of us, so we would divide the lectures up equally, and then we would write up the notes before the lecture. And we like to do it before the lecture because it kind of works as like a preview of the lecture. So um, when you actually go to lecture and you're, you're listening to what your professors are saying, you kind of have an idea of what they're saying already, and that's really helpful. Another reason why you want to have your notes before the lecture is so that you can print them out or have them on your computer and you can write along as the lecture is going on. Sometimes the lecturers like to have some random picture that they like to use to explain a concept. So if you have the lectures printed out in front of you, um, you can just draw along with the professor. So on to the actual process of compiling your notes. The way we did it is we would go through the PowerPoint lectures and we would basically make an outline. Okay, so this is this on the left side is a PowerPoint of a lecture that I received in back in November from my cardiology course. And on the right side is the Microsoft Word document where I made my outline and it eventually turned into a packet. First, I always like to write out on top the lecture, the topic and the week and the date. And this makes it very easy to orient myself and um, it's very easy to find a lecture that I'm looking for later. As for actually making that outline, um, for the most part, I'm writing most of the text that's in the PowerPoint. Sometimes that means just copying and pasting. If the format doesn't work out, it depends on the PowerPoint, but if it doesn't work out, then I'll just type out the words. For a lot of these long lists that I know aren't gonna be that important, um, I usually just skip them. I include some of the pictures that I think will be important and knowing what's important and what's not important just comes with experience and it depends on your professors and what they like to emphasize so you just have to kind of figure that out on your own. Um, so you can see there's a lot of pictures and you can see that I didn't include all the pictures. Um, for the most part I'm writing um, a lot of text, um, some of these ultrasound or the echo cardiogram images, I'm skipping them because it's important to know, but it doesn't need to be in your packet and they don't, they tend to not print as well. So um, I like to include in my packet strictly the information that I like to have for the exam. So a lot of the pictures are skipped. Um, I organize these based on um, how the lecture is organized. So um, it's a good idea to go through all the lectures at first and just sort of preview what the lecture is going to look like and then get started on your uh, outline. A couple other things. Um, I like to have all the formats to be more or less the same. So this you'll just have to decide with your group on how you want to do it. Um, for me, I like to have the margins as narrow. And for font, I like to be Arial not size 9 or 10. Um, and for the bullet point outline, um, when you click on the bullet point outline here, it'll show up as like indented in, but if you do a shift tab, it'll push it all the way to the left so that that saves a lot of room when you print things out. So that's pretty much how I make all my lecture packets. And it, it looks like a lot. This whole thing is 12 pages and I believe this is um, three lectures in one day. Um, but if you have a couple others to split it with, um, it's really manageable and it's really helpful when it, um, when the exam study time comes and you just need to look at your packet to study and you don't really need to look at these like 100 or this is 76 slide PowerPoint because that can take a lot of time and you don't know what's really important and what's not important. Okay, so this is the actual physical packet of the document that I just showed you guys. Um, on the screen. So as you can see, there's some highlighting on there. Um, there's some pictures that I drew on the side and some notes that I took on the side and that's just 
from actually listening to the lecture. Remember, you're making these packets ahead of time, so you're really making them before you know what the lecturer is gonna say. So a lot of times, professors will add on certain things or will draw some things on the board that you wanna just have on your notes as well. So this is why it's also important to just have these ready before the lecture. So these are what my notes look like. So step number three is take advantage of tables and images. So there would be a lot of times when a disease process or like a group of diseases will be explained in like 10 to 12 slides, but you can really condense it into one table. And that's a really efficient way to organize your thoughts. Um, another good thing about having tables is you can um, onkey the table and you can use that as a study tool to memorize things before the exam. If you guys want to find out how to onkey tables, definitely check out my memorization tip video in the past. I'll link it right here. So for certain subjects, it might be helpful to study in an entirely different way. So instead of making an outline, um, let's say for example, some calculation heavy subjects like acid base um, questions, it might be helpful to just make one page study guide on how to solve acid base questions and refer back to that acid base um, sheet so that you can solve any problems relating to that topic. Um, another example would be anatomy or biochemistry where you might be doing a lot of drawing um, and drawing out pathways and drawing out structures rather than looking at words that are in an outline. So depending on the topic, you might have to adjust your studying a little bit and definitely be flexible and find out what works for you. Lastly, be creative and do what works for you. This is how I did most of my studying during the first, sec first two years of med school, but this might not work for you. And I know a lot of people who did it different ways and their ways were just as good as mine. So um, don't think that you have to stick to someone's way specifically, just be creative, find out what works for you. And, um, and I'm sure you guys will do well. Um, some general tips, um, if you decide not to use any of my tips for note taking, um, the following tips will be helpful for anyone in uh, college or med school or whatever educational setting. Um, some good ways to take good notes in class would be to actively participate in your lecture. So um, whether that means going to lecture early or even if you listen at home, be an active participant of the lecture rather than a passive observer. So if you have questions, definitely ask questions during lecture or you can email your professors. And there's your notes aren't going to do anything for you unless you review the notes. So definitely review your notes and have a schedule of how you're going to do that. So either at the end of every day or at the end of the week, um, have a schedule that works for you and review your notes consistently. My friend Sam had a system of using different color highlighters. So she would use yellow highlighter for the first time she was reading her notes through and then pink for the second time and then either green or blue for the third time. So going from lightest color to the darkest color, she would know exactly how many times she's read through a packet of notes. So that worked for her. That didn't really work for me, but um, I think that um, just finding out your own um, technique will be very helpful. Okay, so that's all the tips that I have for taking notes. Um, I hope you guys found it helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave it below in the comment section and like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.